Hi, I'm Dwayne, a JavaScript developer advocate at Vonage. In this video walkthrough, we will create an application that can receive a phone call with the Vonage JavaScript client SDK. You can find a full write-up of this tutorial and the repository for the complete project in the Vonage API developers documentation. A direct link will be in the description. There are a few prerequisites that will be needed before we can get started. Let's go through this one by one. To be able to use the Vonage Client SDK and CLI tool, an account will be needed. Here's how to get one. Go to dashboard.nexmo.com and if you already have one, sign in with your credentials. If you do not have a Vonage account, you will be able to sign up for one. Then, you will be taken to the account dashboard. Take note of the account's API key and secret. They will be needed later. To be able to carry out tasks such as creating applications, purchasing Vonage numbers, and so on from the terminal, you will be using the Vonage command line interface or CLI tool. As the CLI tool requires Node, you will need to install that first. Go to Node's download section of their website. Which package you download will depend on the operating system you are using. Once Node is installed, make sure the version is at least 6.0.0, .0, which is required by the CLI tool. You can check this by opening your terminal and running Node space dash V. Next you will install the Vonage CLI tool. As mentioned before, this will make it possible to do many things from the terminal, like create applications, purchase phone numbers, etc. In your terminal, type the following command. Next, you will link the CLI tool to your Vonage developer account. In your terminal, Type this command, making sure to replace API underscore key and API underscore secret with the values in your developer dashboard. When a call is made to the phone number you get from Vonage, a request will be sent to a publicly accessible URL. This URL is served from the webhook server that you will create in this step. The webhook server will receive the request and return an NCCO that instructs Vonage on how to handle the inbound call. In this case, connect the call by forwarding it to the user's web application. First, create a new project directory. Inside that folder, initialize a new Node.js project. Next, install the required dependencies. These include Express to use as a framework for the webhook server, Local Tunnel to make the server's endpoints publicly accessible to the internet so Vonage can send the in-app voice call requests and call events. Also, install the client SDK. This will be used when building the client application in a future step. Inside the project folder, create a file named server.js and add the code as shown in the written tutorial. Change the subdomain placeholder with a random string of your choice between 4 and 20 alphanumeric characters, lowercase letters and numbers, no underscores or dashes. Make sure to save the file. The Express server has two endpoints. The answer endpoint is where Vonage will send the inbound voice call request. The endpoint will return the NCCO which provides instructions on what to do with the call. In this case, it will speak some text and then connect to the user, Alice, that is logged into the client-side web application. The event endpoint is where Vonage will send all the events that happen during the call. You can now start the server by running node server.js in the terminal. 
Make sure the terminal says the app is available and take note of the URL. It will be needed in the next step. In a new terminal in your project folder, create a Vonage application with this command. Make sure to change the values of the voice answer URL and voice event URL arguments by replacing subdomain with the actual value used in the previous step. Two files are created in the directory. One is a JSON file and the other is a private key. Also, the application ID is created. Take note of it, it will be needed in the future. Use the Vonage CLI to search and purchase an available phone number in your country. Make sure to use the two-character country code for your country. Numbers can also be purchased in the Vonage dashboard. Now, link your Vonage number to the application you created with this CLI command, making sure to replace your underscore Vonage underscore number and application underscore ID with the actual values. If you prefer, this can also be done in the Vonage dashboard. In this step, the user that will receive the incoming phone call in the application, Alice, will be created. Use this Vonage CLI command to generate a user named Alice. This will return a user ID similar to this. In a production application, this is done on the server. The client SDK uses JSON Web Tokens JWTs, for authentication. The JWT identifies the username, the associated application ID, and the permissions granted to the user. It is signed using your private key to prove that it is a valid token. Use the CLI tool to generate a JWT for the user Alice by copying and pasting the following command from the written tutorial. Make sure to replace the app underscore ID with the application ID generated earlier and private underscore key with the name of your private key file. Again, in a production application, this is normally done on the server. Now for the client-side application that will answer the phone call. Create an HTML file called client underscore js dot html in your project directory and add the code from the written tutorial, making sure to replace Alice's JWT with the one you generated in the earlier step. This application allows the user to answer, reject, and hang up an incoming phone call. It also displays the status of the call. Open client underscore js dot html in a browser. Call the Vonage number you purchased earlier. You should hear a voice asking to please wait while being connected. The notification section of the application should update to alert you that there is an incoming call. Click the answer button to answer the call. When you are ready, click the hang up button to end the call. If you take a look at the terminal where the server is running, you can see the request made to the answer endpoint, as well as all the events of the call sent to the event endpoint. To get more information on the topics covered in this walkthrough and a link to the completed code, please visit the written tutorial in the developer documentation. While you are there, take a look at the wide range of other offerings from Vonage and see what else you can build. Thanks.